So welcome to the latest video on BGS history revision. This time you don't have to look at my face. You can look at a little PowerPoint that I've put together to help you with Carnarvon, which is worth actually 10% of your GCSE. It's a really important part of the Edward paper. So I thought it would be useful to go over it with you, familiarize you a little bit more and run through some of the possible questions and the possible answers that you could give. So a bit of history. There is Carnarvon Castle. This is what it looks like today, um, although largely unchanged from the time that Edward had it built. Edward's first Welsh campaign was in 1277. That's when he puts together a substantial army to crush Llewellyn. Um, he takes 100 war horses with him, which tells you how serious he was about this because war horses would be incredibly expensive. He intends to crush the Welsh. Um, and he does. Llewellyn realises he's outnumbered, but Edward shows no mercy. He won't allow now Llewellyn to submit. And instead, Edward burns Anglesey. Uh, Llewellyn is forced to surrender then on the 1st of November, 1277. Uh, should have been it, but the English don't rule terribly uh, sympathetically in Wales. And so in 1283, Llewellyn and his brother Davith, they rebel against Edward, and this time Edward crushes them. However, he realises, Edward realises that war is so expensive he cannot afford a third Welsh campaign. So his intention now is to annex Wales and is to colonise Wales. His first act, as far as that is concerned, is in 1284. He has put together the Statute of Rudlin, which is signed in the Welsh uh, town of Rudlin. Um, and this subjects Wales to English laws and puts it under the control of the English king. So legally, he's annexed Wales, but he has to secure this on a practical level. And that's where the castles come in. So he creates a ring of stone around Llewellyn's old heartland in North Wales. You can see it here. Um, you've got the red castles or the red dots are Edward's new castles, some built on old sites, but these are the ring of stone that is meant to secure once and for all his position in Wales. They're there for protection and intimidation. They're there to house English settlers. It's important that he takes the English across with him. And they are there to make the legal annexation possible through full colonization. Here we have a lovely picture of Carnarvon Castle. That's actually begun in 1283 and is designed by Master James St. George. He is the top designer of his day, top castle builder of the 13th century. He's designed and built um, castles for the Dukes of Savoy um, in the Alps and has built a reputation and you can see some of the design that really categorizes Carnarvon is it's almost um, Arabic um, ideas. Uh, some of these uh, concentric uh, towers are coming from uh, the Crusades. What does this show? Well, it shows that Edward is progressive. Edward is important. He's wealthy. He is seen as somebody of significance on a much wider scale than just Britain. Um, and Carnarvon, for him, is all part of that. Carnarvon is meant to be the main English seat of power. It's what he is effectively making the, the capital of uh, North Wales and the area that he's captured. Uh, significantly, it's close to the legendary um, origins of, of King Arthur um, and where he was supposed to have originated. And this, again, suits Edward's idea of his power and his royal authority. It's one of the reasons why he makes sure that his own son, Edward, is born there in 1284. Uh, the castle's almost a building site at this point, um, but it's important to Edward to have his son, Edward, born there and given the title Prince of Wales from there because of how strategically important Carnarvon is to Edward. 
it's a good location. Um, if we have a look back here, that's where it's it's just on the, the Menai Straits, which go between Anglesey, this is Anglesey, uh, and mainland Wales. Um, it means that it can be accessed from the sea, um, which means it's easy to get materials there. Transport is so much easier by sea in medieval times than it is over land. Um, so it's easier to get materials to it, and it's more secure. They haven't got to take those materials over land and risk any attack from the Welsh. Um, Carnarvon could withstand a siege. You can see here that it's it's facing out to the the sea, um, so it could only really be approached from one side. Huge, great moat that's been uh, dug here, so that uh, it's it's really secure. These walls are seven feet thick. Um, it's got a well tower, which means it's got access to fresh water should there be a siege. Um, and inside you've got murder holes, uh, so called so that you can pour boiling oil through the holes in the ceiling all over your attacker. Nice. Um, and very innovative for the time. It's full of arrow loops, which are the little slits that you can fire arrows from. They're actually in the, the um, 13th century, quite a new um, innovation. So it's there, no doubt, for defensive purposes. I think that's that's fair to say. Um, and has withstood the test of time. That picture I showed you at the start shows that uh, what's there was built to last. OK, when it comes to your Carnarvon question, it's a 16 mark question, and it's the sort of question that you need to use the padge structure. A quick plan, just a quick plan, but it will help you to organise your thoughts. It will help you to write a more coherent, better structured and better um, worded uh, essay at the end of it. Then you're going to need to give reasons to agree, reasons why you would say that the statement is true. So if we look at this first question here as a possible question you could get, the main reason that Welsh castles were built was to defend the English. How far does the study of Carnarvon Castle support this statement? So you'd give some reasons to agree that it was built for defensive purposes but you've got to show that there were other reasons for uh, castles such as Carnarvon being built. If you can link to defence, all well and good, but you've got to give an alternative view. So you'd give some other reasons and then you'd give a judgment, an overall judgment as to why they were built. Uh, the main reason that Welsh castles were built was to secure Edward's legacy. So that's an alternative uh, question that you could get, another one that you should be planning out. And um, the main reason that Welsh castles were built was to consolidate Edward's victory and consolidate or colonise Wales. So there's three examples of the kind of questions that you might get. So how might you approach these? If you take that first one, the main reason that Welsh castles were built was to secure Edward's legacy. Well, we've got some evidence that they were built uh, to secure his legacy because the whitewashed walls, the sheer scale of Carnarvon Castle was impressive. That sends a message to the Welsh and to the outside world um, that Edward is mighty, that he's a conqueror and that he's financially capable of defending his empire. And these innovations are at the forefront of culture as well as military uh, purposes. So reason number one. Reason number two, he links this site to Arthurian legend. Um, and that's all about propaganda. And that's about securing his legacy and his royal authority. Um, and this Carnarvon is built as part of Edward's intention to leave a lasting footprint on Wales. He's not the first English king to take Wales, but he's the first king to leave that lasting footprint. So it is about uh, securing his legacy in Wales. But of course, there's a link to defence and to colonisation, which is then when you would go into maybe using those as your disagree points. Let's look at another one. The main reason that the Welsh castle was built was to defend the English. So a major point there that it's defensive is around the actual features of Carnarvon Castle, the fact that it has a seven foot um, 
thick curtain walls, the murder holes that I mentioned before, that well tower that gives you access to fresh water during sieges. These are all defensive features that give us clues that Carnarvon was indeed built to defend the English. Um, interestingly, evidence that it was built to defend comes from 1294, whilst Edward and his military are involved and distracted by both France and um, Scotland, actually that's the only time that Carnarvon Castle is overrun. So it could tell you that when it's undefended, it's overrun and therefore must have been built for defensive purposes. Um, and another reason why you could say it was built to defend the English is because it was part of the Ring of Stone. It was part of um, his long term plan to defend, to go into Wales, start off with um, the castles at Rudlin uh, and then Conwy and then move to uh, Carnarvon and then eventually on to Bumaris. These kind of show that he builds a defence. Once that area is defended, he can move on. He can then start to colonise and build then another castle to take his invasion further and further into Wales. Again, showing now that we could then come into a link with our reason to disagree is the fact that that links to colonization. And so you could spend a couple of paragraphs looking at colonization. The suggested answer booklet has got all of the possible questions that you could be asked about Carnarvon. And I've included the evidence and the explanations. There's loads of it in there, absolutely loads of those evidence and explanations. What I suggest you do is what I've just done when putting this together is go through and highlight the most memorable or the most compelling evidence for those answers, plan your answers out and take the time to do it because it is worth a whole 10% of your GCSE. Good luck with Carnarvon, bank these answers, and hopefully it'll pay off when you get your results in August.